Well, g'day curd nerds. Today, we're gonna to be making provolone. Well, provolone is an Italian cheese. It's a stretched curd cheese, better known in the class of pasta filata cheeses. I've been wanting to make this one for ages. It's been requested about 20, 25 times on the channel. So I finally got around to making it. I'm making it outside today. It's a lovely day. Stretch curd cheese is the way to go. Very simple, but just let me tell you right now, it does take a bit of time. Now, if you haven't already seen the taste test I did on commercial provolone, um, just check that out. A uh, little info will come up, a little info button will just come up now. Uh, just check that out. You'll see that it's made in the Lombardy region in the Po Valley in Italy. That's uh, traditional. It's known as the poor man's Parmesan. Um, because it has a pecan flavor, it's known to be quite bitey. Uh, it's a bitey cheese. So anyway, let's get on with the cheese. The ingredients are eight liters of cow's milk quarter of a teaspoon of thermophilic culture, an eighth of a teaspoon of lipase, sixteenth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture, 1.5 mil of calcium chloride in quarter cup of water, 1.5 mil of liquid rennet in quarter cup of water. You'll need a bowl of ice water and 18% saturated brine solution. Also on the list there, you need some olive oil. Now you need some special equipment, you'll need a pH meter or some uh, pH paper, heavy duty rubber gloves, large plastic tub or stainless steel bowl, um, ice water again, and some patience. Now heat your milk up to the target temperature. Now the target temperature for the start of this cheese is 35 degrees Celsius or 96 Fahrenheit. So we're gonna be adding our starter cultures now. So firstly, the thermos, thermophilic, and we're gonna sprinkle that over the top. And then we're gonna add our mesophilic starter culture. Reason you use two starter cultures is because the mes mesophilic will acidify the milk at lower temperatures and then once the milk gets to higher temperatures that'll start to acidify the milk. So we're going to allow those to rehydrate for five minutes. So after five minutes we're simply just going to stir the cultures into the milk. So stir for about two or three minutes. Now we're just checking to make sure the temperature is still 35 degrees Celsius after all that. And we're going to allow it to ripen for 45 minutes. Put the lid back on so no dust or insects get in there, seeing I'm making this outside. Okay, now that it's ripened, just give it a quick stir, get the cream back in there, check the target temperature. And then we're going to add in the lipase. Now, lipase gives the cheese the pecan flavour uh, as it ages over a long period of time. So give that a good stir through. And now we're going to add the calcium chloride. Now the calcium chloride simply is a mineral salt and it's going to add back in some soluble calcium into the milk when it's been pasteurized um, and that will help set the uh, curd better. 
So once that's stirred through, we're just going to add in the final ingredient, which is rennet. And rennet, rennet will uh, coagulate our milk and set it into curds and whey. Now we only stir this for no more than one minute and then we still the milk, stop it from moving around and pop the lid back on again. Now we're going to allow the curds to set for one hour. So one hour later, we're going to check for a clean break, see if it splits cleanly, which it seems to there with my little pinky. Okay, and then we're going to use the curd cutter to cut the horizontal, so 1.25 centimetre or half inch cubes, and then use the knife to do the rest. If you haven't got a curd knife, then cut it at a 45 degree angle uh, on two sides and you should get the same effect. So try to cut the curd cubes evenly, makes it a bit simpler later on. So we're just going to let that rest or heal for 10 minutes. So that just helps the surfaces of the curds to, to be a little bit stronger before you start stirring. So when you first start stirring, you're simply lifting the curd, not actually stirring. We're going to raise the temperature to 46 degrees or 115 Fahrenheit over the next 30 minutes. So start off gently stirring or lifting the curds and gently heating the curds. Now by the magic of video, yes I'm at 45 degrees Celsius there and you can see that the curd side has, curd size, sorry, has shrunk quite dramatically. Now once you've reached, reached the target temperature, then we're going to keep stirring for another 15 minutes. And this expels a bit more whey out of the curds. So just checking the temperature, that's after the 15 minutes. Now we're going to allow the curds to settle down to the bottom for 10 minutes. Righto, all that stirring's over. Now all we have to do is pour this into a colander. Got a bucket underneath, hopefully I'm not going to make too much mess. Okay, here come the curds. There we go. Just make sure that the curd mass is fairly even and just give that a firm press because you want it to form a single curd slab. This is important for the next stage. Or so it says. Rightio. That's all good. So we're going to let that rest now for 15 to 20 minutes until that goes into that solid thing. All right, so let's set the timer. Set timer for 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes and counting. Thank you, Siri. She's a wonderful assistant, you know. Now let's see how much. I've got a full bucket away there. That's not sitting in the way, that's good. I'll actually just, just to make sure this isn't sitting in the way, I'll just put it over the pot instead. There we go. Because that bucket, bucket is uh, full as a goog, as we say here in Australia. <laughs>
So now we're going to turn the slab out onto the uh, mat. See if we can do that without making too much mess. There's always one bit of cheesecloth. Cheese everywhere. <laughs> there we go. All good. So we've got bits here, there and everywhere, but anyway, what we're going to do is cut into one inch cubes. I believe this is an inch, maybe it's a bit bigger. Right, there we go. So now I actually tested the pH of the uh, the curds and they're at about between 5.9 and 5.8, uh, which is getting close to the 5.3 to 5.1 that we're after to stretch the curds. Now this process is a fair bit different than what um, I used to make um, mozzarella, the tra traditional mozzarella. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the curd cubes back into the pot and we're going to put 63 degrees celsius water which is where is it 145 fahrenheit um, over just over the top and we let that sit until the temperature comes down to uh, 54 celsius uh, which is uh, 130 fahrenheit and that should take between an hour to two hours. By that time, the acidity should lower rapidly down to the desired acidity of 5.3 to 5.1. All right, so I'll bung the cubes in there now. So the extra heat will make the acidity rise in the curds a lot faster. Let's get all of the curd in there. Don't waste any of it. And everything you can see here that I'm using has been sanitised. Except for my tablecloth, it doesn't matter. Right, there we go. So I've got my hot water. Just pour that over. Just enough to cover. There we go. So that was about two litres or two quarts of water. And I'll put the thermometer all the way down the bottom. And it just doesn't reach. So I'll have to come back and check every so often with the Fermi pen. Okay, so I'll put the lid on that and come back and check that in an hour or so. Where's Siri gone? Set timer for one hour. I found two events in the 
Set timer for one hour. Your timer is set for one hour. It's hard to get good help. Um, I had some trouble during the, the uh, raids putting the water in. Now, I don't know if the instructions were wrong that I, I got the original recipe for that I modified. It said put in water to 63 degrees Celsius, which was, um, let me have a look, what's it say, 145 Fahrenheit. Now, it didn't specify whether the water going in was 63 or that the temperature it had to be before I left it was 63. So I chose the first one, which was the water was 63. And then it said that the temperature would come down to 54 Celsius, 130 within an hour. Now it instantly dropped down to 51 degrees Celsius as soon as I poured the hot water on. So I had to do a bit of troubleshooting. All my batteries on all my cameras went flat. So basically what I did was I heated the water up to 63 degrees while the curd was in it on the stove here and basically then walked away. Now I'll just check the temperature now. And after about an hour and a half, the temperature has dropped down to 52 so it's only two degrees less than what it initially said so that's not too bad as far as I'm concerned we're certainly within the range so it does now the instructions I'm following anyway says that I should now form the curd into a single mass so let me just take that the stove out the way Now I've got my heavy duty rubber gloves on. Now, the curd, now the water, I know the water's not hot enough to do a proper stretch test, but what I'll do before I do this, is I'll actually test the pH of the curds. There's no use actually doing this if the pH of the curds isn't down to uh, 5 point three to five point one so I'll just pinch off a bit put the rest back in the pot and fingers crossed I'll tell you what I'll be making a uh, getting a pH meter after this remarkably says that the curd is at 5.3 pH, which is good, so it is ready to stretch. So I'm quite happy with that, which is a lot quicker than it took for the, uh, the mozzarella than I did the other day. So hang on, let me just uh, put these on again. I'm gonna try and form it into a single ball. I may have to add in some more hot water. The water's gone down to 50 degrees Celsius. 52, sorry. Because the water temperature is just too... Yeah, it's not forming a ball at all. So to truly make this stretch, I'm gonna to have to drain this off. And put the right amount of, um, right. So let's do this. Now I shouldn't lose any of the curd because it's in a fairly cubey sort of state. So I'll just drain it off to about there. There we go. So we still got fairly good cube sizes. 
There we are. And I'll heat up some water now. This water preferably to 77 Celsius. And then we'll work the work the curds. Now here's the tub I prepared earlier. Tip this in here, put this on the stove. I'll get there eventually, folks. But this is what happens during a cheese making session. Not everything always goes to plan, of course. There we go. I'll also put some of that whey that I reserved back in as well. Just some keep in case I need some more. There we go. It's good to keep all this stuff handy. Now that will take a while to come up to temperature. Okay, I've heated up my whey to 77, between 77 and 80 Celsius, which is about 170 Fahrenheit. Uh, so that's all good. Uh, the curds at the right pH, that's good. I've got some chilled water here. So just uh, ordinary tap water. And I had some uh, large ice blocks. Now I'm gonna put uh, two teaspoons of cheese salt just into the iced water. This helps the uh, cheese absorb a little bit of salt there uh, and not to leach too much. Just give that a bit of a stir. It's not gonna absorb it very well because it's freezing cold in there. And it's only gonna be in the ice water bath for 15 minutes anyway, so no big deal. Right, so I'm gonna put about two liters to start with of the hot wave. Now hang on, before we start, let's put on my heat resistant gloves. These are heavy duty gloves, rubber gloves, latex, and they're cotton lined. Right, so let's, let's do this, shall we? Fingers crossed. So this is a one cup measure, so 250 mils. That's half a litre. One litre. One and a quarter. One and a half. One three quarters. And two litres. So. Being the right temperature, this should just all meld together. See how we go. Now these gloves are pretty good because I can can hardly feel the heat. Oh yeah, so it's starting to meld together as one ball. It's a good sign.
Oh, now I can feel the heat through the gloves. Now at this stage I was starting to get a bit disheartened because even though the pH paper said the it was at the right acidity, the curd just wasn't stretching, it was breaking, it was brittle and uh, it was getting late in the night and I was getting fairly tired. Anyway, I'll let uh, Gavin tell the rest of the story. You know, I don't think this curd is at the right pH. It doesn't matter what that pH paper says. This is far too brittle. Even though it's stretching, it's not stretching as it should be shiny. So what we can do, we can leave that in the hot water for about half an hour. And then come back to it. And that will increase in pH quite dramatically. And hopefully, I haven't made a mess of it. Anyway, time will tell. Now just a quick update. The, I had the curd mass in here, it wasn't stretching. It's a bit of a troubleshooting guide to provolone at the moment, isn't it? So basically the pH, oh, stop. The pH is not right. So what I did is I put the curd mass back into a colander in here and I basically put it over the warm way and I'm letting it drain again and keeping it warm under the lid in the colander and I'll turn it over every 30 minutes or so and I'll check um, using the stretch test is probably a better more reliable method uh, and the stretch test is simply hold the way in here is still at about 77 celsius so i'll break off a bit of the curd uh, i'll dip it into the whey with a, with a slotted spoon and if i can stretch it about a meter or about that far then it's ready to stretch and then put it into the mold shape i want either that one or that one i haven't quite figured that out yet i may stretch stretch in here i might, might just stretch it into the pot uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, we're in for a long night, I reckon. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, let's wait and see what happens. Right, it's been a long day. I started this provolone at 11 a.m. It's now midnight and the curd is still not ready for stretching. I'm, do, I'm just about to test one final uh, stretch test and uh, we'll see if not then I'll simply wrap the um, curds up in cling film and put it in the fridge to uh, slow the acidification process down and then I'll try again tomorrow um, and uh, we'll see how we go from there anyway we'll do a stretch test in a second I'm getting tired as you can tell Now, I was starting to give up hope um, about this stage, but I thought I'll give it one more try. Um, as I said earlier, I, all I could have done was put it in the fridge um, and let it rest overnight. It would have come up to um, the right acidity. Anyway, so I've heated up the uh, whey to 77, and this was the last stretch before bed, as it's saying there. Um, what I would have done differently, I probably wouldn't have cut it into cubes earlier on. I would have let it in one big mass and let that sit and just keep turning it over and draining it probably would have happened a lot earlier now don't forget to use heavy gloves when it's at this temperature you don't want to burn yourself because oh look it's starting to stretch look at that anyway put it back on the way for a little bit more and this surprised me so much i'd started to uh, get a glimmer of hope well look at that and it was starting to stretch and be shiny so i popped it back into the way let's have a look there again and stretch it did so that was fantastic <laughs> and uh, yeah that was perfect so um, I continued on stretching the curd so there it is perfecto 
So that's stretched up to about a metre, which is about a yard, close enough to it, without breaking at that stage. So it was actually ready to do. So that took nearly nine hours to get to the correct pH, uh, which is incredible. It's a long, long time. So if you're going to make provolone, set aside a good day. Or, um, yeah, anyway. So I put the uh, slab in there and eventually I broke it into three bits just to heat it up. It continued to acidify uh, while it was in there, so I just gently stretched it um, underneath the way, continued to dip it in there until it started to stretch. I knew it was getting there when it started to see a shiny surface on the, on the cheese and it was stretching well, as you can see there, which was really good. So I could stretch each individual piece. It was shiny, dunk it back in the water, it wouldn't snap. So I knew I was there, I was at the right pH for making the, uh, the ball of provolone that I was going to make. So I was squeezing it tightly, get any air bubbles out. So I did this to each of the three pieces and then I simply moulded them together and uh, stretched the surface of, of it and then folded it over and then folded it so it was shiny and then made it to a neck over on the other side formed it into a pear shape and as you can see there keep dunking in the water to keep it warm and then once you get a neck on it then just uh, poke the top of the neck back in with your thumb and that keeps the excess in it kind of seals the neck now what would I do differently next time uh, besides not cutting the slab up to a, into a cube I would double this recipe so I would use 16 litres of milk to make a bigger provolone um, that's probably about all I'd do because of the amount of time it takes I'd want a bigger cheese bigger bang for the buck this is pretty small and you'll see this next um, when it's hanging um, how small this cheese turned out. Uh, yeah, that, that's about all I do. Double the recipe and I would not cut it into cubes. I'd let it rest as one big slab to uh, get down to the right pH and just be patient I think too. So once it was formed into its shape I put it into the iced water. The water had actually cooled down a little bit and uh, which was good. It was still uh, kept its shape so I kept it in there for 15 minutes and that helped uh, keep its pear shape which was what I was after so I could actually hang it in string so there's 15 minutes later I'm putting it into the 18% saturated brine we brine that for a total of eight hours this is a very dense cheese now so need that add eight hours and it's a it provolone is normally a very salty cheese anyway so halfway through the eight hours about the four hour mark you just need to roll that so that uh, it is uh, salted um, throughout so after eight hours you simply put it onto a drying mat Now it will have a tendency to uh, change its shape because it is still fairly um, pliable at this stage. So we're going to air dry that only for a couple of hours, so two hours. And we're going to turn it regularly to prevent it from flattening on the bottom. So we're going to cure that at 17 to 18 Celsius or 62 to 65 Fahrenheit at 80% relative humidity. We're going to turn that daily or move it around daily. Now if you get mold on it, then wipe that off with a salt vinegar solution. So it's a teaspoon of salt to half a cup of vinegar and just wipe that off. Well, here's my tiny provolone after two weeks and uh, I'm about to oil it. So it's been hanging here in the string onion bag. Uh, it's been about 17, 18 degrees Celsius here, uh, which I think is about 63 Fahrenheit. Um, here at home it's uh, autumn here in Australia so technically it's been the right temperature so uh, we'll see how it goes anyway I'm gonna coat it in olive oil now 
for its rest of its curing. Alrighty, so we're just going to take it out of its string bag. Let's tie it on a little knot here so I can reuse it later. Now the beauty of hanging these is that the the flat bit that you saw earlier is completely rounded now and you can see it's nice and smooth. This is after two weeks. You can see that the, there's a nice rinds form, it's very solid. A lot of the moisture's gone out, very smooth. I've got nice clean hands by the way. Anyway, so we're just going to oil that now to assist in further rind development. So I've just got my olive oil here. Let's get the scissors out of the way. I need a little bit of oil. So then do this once a month. Now I don't know, this is a fairly small cheese, so this will probably only last, this might dry out too much, so. Um, I'm thinking that it's only gonna be able to mature for a little while. So let's put a little bit in there so it doesn't get mold in it. This is going to help protect any mold development, stop it from drying out <coughs> as it's hanging in its bag. Now I'm going to, instead of hanging this in the kitchen where it uh, tends to get a little bit warm, I'm going to hang it in the laundry where it tends to be cooler in the house. So I'm going to put it back in its string bag. Now that it's all oiled, just one hands. Get that out of the way, give it a string. This is um, twine that's used for uh, making salami. I just happen to have some from my uh, salami making. So basically just tying a knot in the end there and uh, looping it through the string bag a little bit for some added support. Um, pretty simple, just um, add a, uh, a loop there so I can hang it on a hook that I've got in the laundry. Now that I'm going to cure this for between two to four months for a dolce um, because it's pretty small. I don't think I'll be able to do the six to 12 months for the picante, but we'll see. And there we go. Nice loop, just cut off the excess. And that's perfect. So that's going to protect, sorry, not protect, but that's going to stop, it's all well oiled, stop the uh, mold from getting to the cheese and uh, help with rind development. So that's a nice quick way to, uh, to hang your cheese. Well, there you have it, curd nerds. There's the provolone. Uh, a dainty little cheese with only eight liters of milk and uh, it did take a long time to make as you could uh, see in the video but i think it'll be well worth it now i don't know if we'll get to the pecant stage or picante stage uh, this may end up being a provolone dolce uh, depends on how long uh, the the rind holds out and how long uh, how, whether it dries out or not so we'll see how that goes anyway i'll pop that down there now, if you want to check out some other pasta filata videos, you can click through over here and check out my playlist. Also, if you'd like to buy the ingredients and stuff, check out littlegreenworkshops.com.au. And uh, also, if you'd like to support the channel, then uh, support via Patreon over here. Thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and we'll see you next time.